because we're just at noon here. So we just want to thank everybody for coming to our workshop today called Mental Spring Clean. We've had an incredible uh, turnout for today. We have, I think, over 60 people registered. Um, so we're excited. Very excited. Can't wait. All right, so a little bit about us. So um, I'm Christine Anastasia. I am a master certified life coach. I help moms that are in the messy middle of life and career. I typically um, coach moms one-on-one -on -one and I also offer workshops um, and I use sort of mindset strategies and daily habits so you can thrive. Um, I'm so excited to do this workshop today with Tina and I will have her take it away with um, herself and her business. Thank you so much, Christine. I'm really excited about our partnership and all of the moms that we're hopefully going to make an impact on today. As you know, my mission behind Tidy by Tina was really started to help another overwhelmed parent in the middle of the pandemic, dealing with our new normal of working from home, being school teachers, being soccer coaches, and all of that goes into our motherhood. And so as a professional organizer with a team of eight wonderful women, we work in homes every day with our clients to really help them manage the visual clutter that is around them, affecting them in their environments um, to help provide a little bit more mental clarity. Um, and so I'm really excited to be doing this together because I think our experience and our um, expertise combined is really going to be helpful to um, really anyone, but especially moms who are dealing with the mental load that we all Awesome. So um, when we came together on this, we sort of have this overarching idea um, around the working mom mantra. And it's really about creating systems, having the right mindset and the support that really creates ease. So it's really, um, you know, on the back end, setting up these systems so that we can sort of have more flow, more organization. Um, and a little bit more space, both in our minds and in our homes, so that we can run properly. Because we all know that, um, you know, much of the work of the working mom is in our head and in our spaces, and we flow better when when we have this type of success. So we want you to sort of keep this in mind as we um, move through this today. All right. So a little snapshot about today. Um, the experience of a working mom, we all hold an incredible amount of invisible load as working moms. And it often, you know, ends up where at any given point, we're overwhelmed. Um, and we want you today to sort of think about how do you want to feel in your spaces, your physical spaces, and how do you want to feel in your mind? There's often so many times that we live in struggle or we live in survival. And much of that has to do with what we're sort of um, telling ourselves in our mindset. And it also occurs just because many of us have young children and are faced with spaces that um, get cluttered. We have lots of uh, you know things that become disorganized and we wanna sort of help you to um, see how you can create more ease in both of these spaces. So Tina's gonna kick us off with the first five tips of um, setting up your home workspace. And I'm gonna talk a little bit around prioritizing yourself as a working mom. And then at the end of this webinar, we'll be doing some giveaways and some time for Q and A. Great, so I'll take over from here for a little bit. And so let's see here. So first, some house, basic housekeeping rules. We will announce the giveaway at the end of the webinar. For those of you that who may not be familiar with what the giveaway is, our giveaway and our gift to everyone here today is a chance to win a session with both of us. So you would get a three hour mini session with myself to really focus on your physical workspace, you as a mom prioritizing yourself. Now, if you are in the Boston area, I will come to you. If you are out of the Boston area, out of 20 mile range, I will um, provide my services virtually. Christine will provide all her services virtually. So that really helps that busy mom who may only have this 45 minute lunch hour available. Um, we both can really accommodate our services to you. Please use the chat 
to ask us any questions that might come up um, as we gather our questions. I'm sure if you have the question, someone else also has that same question, but may not be as brave to um, answer, ask it. So please feel free to use the chat. We'll go through our questions at the end, leaving in about five or 10 minutes to ask, um, answer anything that you might have questions about. Um, the recordings will be sent to everybody at the end of this, probably closer to tomorrow, you'll get the recording, the tip sheet and the answers or the um, winner of the giveaway. So all of that will be in the email to you and feel free to share that with any other working moms in your life. Um, that's why we wanted to record this. We know how it is to have something on your schedule and you're looking forward to it. Something comes up, you can't make it. So we really wanted to be able to record these nuggets and share them with whoever is in your life. Um, all right, so let's get started. Let's talk about organization in your workspace. As a working mom, we're often switching between tasks um, pretty regularly. So we need to be able to create environments that support us in that, support us in our busy routine, support us in the switching between dropping off at school, getting on a Zoom, getting into a meeting, doing your taxes, picking up from school, going to soccer, coming home, doing dinner, bedtime, bath, and then sitting down to work again, right? All of that is typically my day. Um, so I share that with you because as a mom with two kids in two completely different life stages, I have a toddler and a teenager. I don't know which one's worse, but they're both pretty tough. Um, but my life is all over the place. I'm doing nap time, but I'm also doing lacrosse pickups. So trying to make sure that my work doesn't suffer because I am trying to be present for my children is a big thing to me. So what I like to really do when I'm talking to a mom or working with her in her home is find a workspace that she is naturally um, drawn to. Where do you naturally work? Is it the kitchen counter? Because that's where you can see the kids. You can put them, you know, to play with something and you can answer emails there, um, get your paperwork ready for the day, whatever it is. Is it your kitchen counter? Is it your basement where you're hiding away from the kids and trying to get some quiet time in that dark, in that little corner in the back? Or is it your guest bedroom where you have a little bit more space, but you still need to make it available for someone else to use it when you choose to have guests? So what I like to do is choose anywhere. Don't think you have to go out and buy a fancy desk and fancy shelving and the perfect pen holder. Just choose somewhere that you're naturally drawn to where it is where you do your work. That's what where you find yourself the being the most productive and build the environment around you. So do you need to have your pen, your cute pen holder close to you in the kitchen? Because that's really where you're taking your calls. Do you need to have boxes of wires that may look pretty cute, but you would never know by opening them that they're just full of wires and crap. And it's not on your countertop. So you know that when you need that extra charger before running onto your Zoom call, it's there. Concept number two. Everyone seems to get really overwhelmed with the thought of organization. You walk into your space, and you're like, I don't even know where to start. Where would I start? Okay, I should start on the paper. Oh, here's that tax lien that I had to respond to 30 days ago. Why well, should go do that? And there goes your day, right? So what I like to tell clients is focus on the trash. Just take all the easy decisions, what takes you a couple of seconds. Yep, I know this is trash. I know the kids aren't in this activity anymore. I know we can get through the majority of this pile because it's mostly trash bite-sized pieces. Start by putting a timer on for 25 minutes. Get a nice big timer with nice big round, that was my time going up, nice big round um, numbers so that you can see how much time you have, how much progress you've made in the short amount of time that you've worked. 25 minutes on, five minutes off. If that's all you have in that lunch hour or once a day, 25 minutes will make so much of a difference you don't have to spend all day Saturday and Sunday trying to clean out that space. Next, decide which are the items that are essential to your job, right? I don't, I as a professional organizer don't really need a stapler every day. Not something that I use daily. It's not something that I need all the time, but sticky notes, Sharpies, my laptop, my chargers, those are all things that I need to keep within my arm's reach. And my extra pens, my to-dos, 
my more legendary stuff is close enough where I'm not leaving this room to go and get something because doorways serve as this portal of forgetfulness. You walk through the doorway and you all of a sudden forget why you even got up or what you walked into the room for. It's an actual science behind it. So being able to stay in the place that you're in when you're in deep focus work and have all of your materials around you will help you be more, more productive and actually get things done. So again, back to my create a home for everything that you're using. So whether that's in drawers, on your desk, on shelves, make sure that things aren't just on the shelf, but that they have their space because it's so easy to tell when something isn't in its place when everything else is. So if something's out of place, it'll be easy for you to manage what needs to get done versus if everything is out of place, it's kind of hard to really, again, know where to start. So this space here that we did was for an art therapist who was just very overwhelmed with all of the materials that she needed. There's no way we could have purged those materials. She needed to be able to have them in her workflow when she's being most creative at her arm's reach. She can't have the feathers or the glue sticks or the shells in the back of the closet where she didn't even know they existed. She needed to be able to have them right in front of her. So when she is in that creative flow, there's no interruption of that. She's able to easily access her material and put things back where they need to be wrap up and be done and actually get a project done versus halfway starting one project, grabbing a few materials, things over here. Then now I saw this other material, now this up. So just things go everywhere. And so we want to make sure that if you're working at your kitchen table, dedicate a kitchen drawer to just your work things. My kitchen drawer, I put my iPad, I'll put a notebook, some pens, because I know that's come four o'clock, that is my desk. That's where I'm working. That's where I'm taking calls. I'm not gonna run upstairs to go grab my notebook to take notes on. And I wanna make sure that I don't forget what I'm talking to clients about or the important details. So preparing myself for the way that I know my life works is the reality of what we have to accept. And lastly, for my concept is spend the last five minutes of your workday, put it in your calendar, make a routine of what your closeout of your day is like. Does that mean you're responding to emails right before you leave? Does that mean you are um, clearing out your inbox? Or does that mean you're collecting all the papers and throwing them in the shoebox? I'm a professional organizer and all of my paper lives in a shoebox. And every other Sunday or one Sunday a month, I leave my kids and I come to my office and I work through this paperwork. Because if I try to go through this paperwork at any way, I would just get really overwhelmed and not make any progress and not pay my bills. So the way that man that works for me is hiring a sitter for a couple of hours, focusing on my paperwork. But when I'm cleaning up at the end of the day, all of my paper goes in here. So that when I'm looking for that one important paperwork, I know it's at least it's in this box. Um, so that's it for me. Um, do, we will open it up to questions. I see some questions coming through in the chat, but I'm very excited to work with all of you. I do work virtually, like I said, so we can go through your workspace, really help figure out what your problem is. These are just common issues that I see going into spaces every day and really seeing the same problem come up. Everyone feels like they're the only one who can be going through this. They're professionals. How could they have this type of workspace? But there's just ways that we have to create systems around your certain routines and lifestyle to help you be the most productive, efficient person you can. So thank you very much, Christine. I'm going to hand this over to you. Awesome. Um, so one of the things, um, just sort of like segueing from what uh, Tina was sharing around, you know, creating this workspace in your home that that works for you, like as a working mom, so many of us are trying to find things within our homes. And we don't often think about how it can really be in like a bite size as to how do you create this workspace that sort of sets you up for the long term? And so, you know, by 
taking those tips from Tina around like once, you know, whether that's a few hours or whatever it is to get your workspace in um, a place that sets you up for success, it's hard to fail after that because you've sort of aligned your space, you've aligned your mindset that you know where your things are and then you sort of can get on your way. I think oftentimes where the barriers and the um, the issues or challenges come up is like, we, we can't shift out of like, how is this going to serve us for the long term? Because if you're like anything in my household, there are so many papers per week. It's just the amount of stuff that comes home, the mail, the the everything. And like, I, I do like Tina does, like I have a pile and I have to go through it once a week and it's hard to make it disappear. Um, so I want to talk a little bit around the mindset of, um, you know, being a working mom and thinking about how you can really adopt a thrive mindset by starting small. So when I'm working with clients and helping them to think about, you know, we live in sort of a, a rat race. It's a very busy life that we live and we can either live in reaction and sort of like struggle and fight or flight and survival mode, or we can take a decision like we are today to say, I'm going to drop in and adopt a thrive mindset. Meaning today is the day that I'm going to start thinking about how on my daily and monthly schedule, I'm putting myself first and then all of the things that come up in my life, whether that's family, work, um, extended family, the list goes on. And so I'll break this down in some of the concepts that we go, go forward with. So with, you know, adopting a Thrive Mindset, the next one I want to talk about is building in micro moments in your day. Most of us, um, if you're in that morning routine, you pretty much feel like you've run a marathon and then you sort of log on your computer without any moment of sort of taking a breath or an inventory of how you're doing. And much of us um, have many, you know, emotional things flying in, personal things, work things, but we're not sort of doing that daily check to see what do we need in this moment? Um, can we take a pause before we like log in and try to get through like a million things in our work schedules or our personal lives, like all what it is. So I've come up with this concept of just calling it a micro moment. And what that is, is it's a couple minutes per day to really just check in with yourself, to just like take yourself off the hamster wheel and like make yourself a cup of tea and just like breathe and say like, all right, I have like a couple minutes. I'm just going to set myself up for this meeting that I have, take a couple deep breaths and like log in, see how that feels. Maybe at lunchtime, you do the same thing. Like you build in like a couple minutes to just sort of take a reset. It's these micro breaks that are sort of getting you out of the mode of just doing, 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 and being in constant productivity without sort of like taking breaks that sort of like set you up to, to refill your cup. We'll go to concept three. <laughs> So the next one, so let's say like, you know, you have those couple minutes in your day. It could be before a meeting. It could be right after drop off. It could be in the car waiting for an activity that, that your kid is going off to. The other one is, you know, going back to this concept of really starting small. So I call this the micro shift. If you don't have an hour in your day to go to the gym or do something that, you know, feels like a monumental task to take care of yourself, I often share that, you know, Building in 20 minutes a day can be hugely beneficial just to remember that that you matter and that um, taking care of your well-being can be just a small shift in your day. And it can be really intentional. Like you could knock out um, two hours of work, let's say that's from 9.30 to 11.30, and you intentionally stop for 20 minutes so you can take a walk around the block or you could, um, I don't know, if you like feeding your birds, go to the bird feeder, feed your birds, do something for you for 20 minutes, but it has to be a clear break. It can't be, oh, I got to do like 50 more things till noon and then I'll, I'll eat something. It's really um, reminding yourself that taking that 20 minute break is going to recharge you to sort of get to that next block of the day. So um, what we're sort of doing here is interrupting the 
you know, the stretch of the eight hour day or however long your day is to sort of have these intervals of self-care and, and well-being for yourself. How are we doing on time? It's 1222. Okay, so micro events. Um, the life of a working mom, it can be so easy to um, be in constant giving to our, our children's activities, um, our extended family events that come up, whether it's birthday parties or um, holiday parties, whatever it might be. Um, I like the concept of building in micro events because it's something that you can look at during a month or a one to three month period where you're like, oh, hey, um, I like that painting class. I think it'd be really fun to do it with some friends. I'm going to book that and I'm going to look forward to it. Or, okay, like two months from now, like there's something that I want to do with friends. And really like throughout your year, just bookmarking and doing things that bring you joy because there's so often times where we're always scheduling all these things for our kids, but we're not really building those moments that are also for joy. And, and what I will share is that our to-do lists and end, end up being never ending. And if we don't just start to like block by block, try to do this, you can so easily fall back into patterns where you become burned out and you um, find that it's hard to find joy again. So I call that a micro event because there are some seasons where your family gets clobbered with sickness. So you're out a month because you're just taking care of yourselves or your kids, or maybe a family member um, isn't doing well and you have to lead into that, or your job becomes really, you know, a high volume season. So this helps to break it down into like a small event where you can look forward to it. You don't have to like feel the stress of like, oh, I have to do this every week or every month. It's just, you know, laying for it in the calendar because you, you'd rather set yourself up for success than, than feel like you have this buildup where you have to always have something for self-care or well-being. It's sort of meeting in the middle. And the last one, so mental health, this is the one that I think is most underrated. And I'm sharing this today because I am in so many moms groups online and I see so many moms out there that they need connection and they need support and they need ways to be seen uh, with all of this mental load that we carry. And you know, when we think about our daily lives, like most of this stuff is not uh, easily, easily to come by. We have, um, you know, whether it's spouses, other family members, all these different obligations, our mental health usually suffers because we are in constant trying to work out this formula for ourselves. So I really encourage um, all of you today to just think about how your mental and emotional health affects all these areas that you're trying to sort of um, resolve as a working mom. And a lot can, and a little can go a long way. So whether it's therapy, whether it's coaching, whether it's community, um, how are these small little ways that you're sort of taking care of your mental health going to help you through all of these seasons? Because it's not just the newborn stage and it's not just the toddler stage and it's not just the teenage stage. Like this is um, our lives of, of, of ongoing well-being to support ourselves. And we all need to do this. It's, it's maternal mental health for, for your life. Um, so I, I really believe that that is a huge concept that sort of goes by the wayside. Um, but when we bolster each other and when we support each other and we see each other, it, it lessens like, you know, we're alone in this. We all have this mental load. It's huge. Um, and some seasons are worse than others. So we really need to um, lean into each other to figure out like, how is my mental health being supported by, you know, what Tina's saying, like carving out the space for myself. Like when I have that space organized and when I'm working through these systems, all of a sudden I feel better. So it really works hand in hand.
So great. That was great, Christine. I'm sorry. I got a little distracted. I was so into what you were saying. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like you're in my life. How do you know? So thank you so much for sharing that. Again, just to recap a little bit about what I shared, find the light, find what drives you, find what motivates you, find where you radiate the best and set yourself up for success in that area. Clear the clutter, make the easy decisions, make do the things that are easy, fast and quick, then worry about the rest. Make sure you keep your essentials near you. Set up the systems so that the daily things that you're touching every day, maybe put a little tag on everything for a week and see what you actually touch. Clear the rest out and only leave what you need around you. Set up the systems back to everything I was saying and then shut down time. Really let yourself, like Christina is saying, they get those micro shifts for you. It's, it's huge. Allow yourself to not just go from one task to the another. Really be intentional about shutting down one part of your day and going into another so you can be present and be where your feet are. Awesome. So um, I just had a thought come up as Tina was sort of sharing that. One thing that I also think is helpful uh, for everyone to sort of be seen, um, when you're on the hamster wheel, what I like to call is like the rat race of life, um, your to-do list is never going to be done. It's never going to be done. So I always like to think about how do we figure out what the two to three items that are the highest priority to be done in a day. Start to think about what could sort of either come off the list or is like big picture or just gets dropped off. Um, it's just a really important exercise to know that your well-being has to come before your to-do list because you're never going to get through it. Um, it just multiplies and the more kids and the more activities, it just becomes, it grows and grows. Um, so for my recap around um, some of these tips, adopting a mindset as number one, a thrive mindset, and one that you really believe that you're going to take stock of your well-being and really own it. And that has to start your day, like every day. And I hope you'll do this in community with me, um, that that this is where you want to go, that that you want to make some shifts in your life where you're going to implement some of this stuff because you really believe in it. Number two, micro moments, whether you're working remotely or in the office, there's always a way to build in times to breathe, make a shift, take a break, whatever it might be to sort of regulate your nervous system, to help you um, sort of take some breaths of like, what needs to be done today? Like, what do I need to leave for a different day? Um, a micro shift. Maybe you don't have an hour. Maybe you have 10 minutes, 10 minutes taking a walk outside to get the mail or just like do something else can do wonders for your, for your mental health. And just to shift out of, um, you know, all the daily tasks that you're doing. Um, micro event. If you're feeling in a rut or you just need something to sort of bring in some more joy, build it in your calendar. Like, like just, Move, move the obstacle away and put it in. Like something like that could just do wonders for remembering like what it's like to do something fun. Like we all can just get into the race of being in burnout for so long that we forget like, wow, just like going out to dinner with a friend or spending time uh, doing an activity that you love. Like it just does a reset for you. So I invite you to look at that as well. And then lastly, um, being in spaces that make you feel good. Today is really about community. I really believe that all the women that signed up for today or that are gonna like check this recording out later are here because they truly believe that when you are connected to other women that are facing the same challenges and obstacles and you're nurturing your mental health, that you will get better. And so each of us by you know looking at these things, getting inspired, thinking about a, a small little shift or a small little habit. This is each of us supporting all of us on this journey. And it is um, something that also gets passed to your kids. So this is not only like shifting it today, but you're shifting to show your kids that your well-being matters so that they know that. And what a gift that is. Like 